wait a minute. You might be like, hey, all this talk about coding a game on my own and all is okay, sir, but am I really doing coding when I'm moving blocks? I'm just simply moving blocks. That's not coding. Using blockly language is not real programming. I've seen programming in movies and other places. It's done with some blue screen with some white text or black screen with some green text. And it looks like there are so many uh, syntax things like braces, semicolons, and so many other things that I can't even understand. That's only real coding. Booming blocks is like, I'm not a kid, I don't want to be doing that. Now, do you think, the question to you is, do you think using blocks to code is real coding? Use, is using blockly the language, is that real programming? Now, to answer that question, I'm going to play a simple, uh, an app that basically does something very simple. I'm going to show you that. This app basically helps you build the starting of a paint app, right? Like, as you move your mouse, it starts painting. Uh, it's actually beautiful. It's kind of addictive. Now, question to you is, do you think this can be built using Blockly as a language, using block-based programming? Think about it. I'm going to open the code now. Now, this is the code that actually helps build the paint app that you saw. Now, look at it. It's written in blocks. It's about 20 lines. But if you're wondering, hey, is block-based programming not exact programming? I'll just show you something, right? This is exactly the text version of it, right? It's written in JavaScript. Now, you can just change it to blocks. The computer doesn't care, right? The blocks are just an easy way for you to remember the syntax and not worry about it in the beginning. The computer doesn't care. The computer will build the app that you want it to do. Then what does the computer care about if it doesn't care about whether you're using blocks or language like JavaScript? The computer cares about the logic that you've implemented and how you've broken the program down to do what you want it to do. Let's take another example. Now in this other example, there's a game called Flybot. I'm gonna play the game. Um, and press space to start. Okay, so what you can see here is this game, I'm basically flying and, okay, wait. Okay, I'm collecting these coins and if I touch that person, I die. Okay, I just died. Uh, I'm gonna play this once more, okay? Because I'm, it's a somewhat hard game. Okay. I'm pretty sure you can play this game better than I do. The question to you though is, uh, this game, do you think it was built using blocks, so do you need text-based programming to build this? Think about it. Now, this is the code of this game. Now, let's look through the code, right? I'm going to just walk you down the lines of code that you have, all written in blocks, by the way, as you can see. Go all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. I'm currently at line number 193, 194. Oh yeah, there it is. 290 lines of code, 300 lines of code written with just blocks, this game you can create with blocks. So I've just made a text right now to show you. If I show you this, this suddenly looks like, oh, this is more serious code, but it's exactly the same as writing with these blocks, as you can see. So once again, the question to you is, does the computer care about what language you use? Do you use blocks or not? No, it builds the game that you want, as long as your logic is correct and your algorithm is correct, right? So the computer cares. No, it doesn't. Let's play one more game. Now, this time I'm going to pick a somewhat really, somewhat complex game I'll show you, right? Let's pick this game. It's actually somewhat hard as well. Level one. And uh, okay, now I need to be like careful while playing this. Okay. I actually really like this game because if I stand here, I start sliding down. It's a kind of hard game to play. Uh, watch, watch, watch. Ah, okay, yeah, not bad. So this game has like full on levels and uh, uh, you know, like difficulty levels that are baked in all the way. Oh, okay. Question to you again. This one probably can't be written, right? This one probably needs a more complex way to write. Now let's look at the code of, of this game. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's pretty long. Um, it's 1800 lines of code. I just counted. Let's go all the way down. Uh, as you can see, we still have added some 600 line of code. So if you go really, really, really down, okay, wait, you can hardly see, I should slow down. Yeah. So you can see that as we expected, that game is pretty intense. It has a good amount of code and I'm gonna move this to text, right? For you to see whether it really makes a difference. Right? Somehow when you see it this way, this is the actual JavaScript code that's behind it. But when I move it to blocks, it's gonna look like it's written using blocks. Once again, does the computer care? The computer doesn't care whether you're using blocks or text as long as the logic and the algorithm are correct. 
In fact, when I did my project, I, I did a project in theoretical computer science as part of my computer science engineering, and I never even touched the computer throughout that internship for two to three months because I was just writing what I need to write on a piece of paper. The algorithm, and that's all my professor cared about. So what's the summary here, right? Once again, the computer doesn't care whether you're using blocks or text. In fact, undergraduate students from Stanford and MIT who are like really like much older, start with block-based programming, why? Because when you're taking your brain and wrapping it around this problem of figuring out the logic, you don't want to be distracted by questions like, hey, should I put semicolon here or comma here? Should I put like curly bracket here or straight bracket here or square bracket? That's not what you need to be thinking about. That's reason one. And second, let us say that you think that you, one language is only really cool, like Python or something like that. It may not even exist by the time, uh, and will definitely not be fashionable by the time you actually enter and like have a job or do something. So then what should you focus on? If you should not focus on the syntax and whether it's text or not, what should you focus on? You're gonna be focusing on, that's right, the logic of the programming itself, the coding concepts, so that you can apply it to any language. So now that you have gone through these experiences, let's revisit the same question that we started this video with. And let's see if your answer, what your answer is now.